God said in the beginning, let there be light. I want to say this to you and all of you that are watching. God said, let there be light. If you don't shine with the light of Jesus Christ, I want you to know there will be light somewhere. Because when God commanded the light, he has never taken the light away. There is a day when the light is going to go out. Until that time, look at your neighbor and tell them in their face, let there be light. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the anointing of God that makes it easy to preach. And I pray that today, not what I say, but what you say, will have a profound and eternal effect in the hearts and lives of your people. And we give you glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shout a great big amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, talking about Jesus, the Word, the light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Let there be light. And God spoke into the void emptiness of darkness in the very beginning. And it is not a coincidence that the first time that the universe heard the voice of the Almighty God, the message was not let there be joy, let there be peace, let there be love. The first words that you heard, the universe heard, was let there be light. Because God always begins by turning the light on. Light require, life requires light. Faith requires light. We can't deny, ladies and gentlemen, that we are living in dark times right now. The list of sins and immorality are more than what we could ever number. There is no doubt. But when the light stands next to the darkness, according to John chapter one, verse five, the light shines in the darkness, the Jewish Bible says, and the darkness has not suppressed it or overcome it. I want you to know no matter how dark it gets in the world that we're living in right now, the light of Jesus Christ is going to shine somewhere. And my prayer is, is that Pace, Florida will become a lighthouse and beacon for the glory of God in these last days. If you want to be a part of that, give the Lord praise right now. Would you do it? So here's a coming phenomenon that's going to take place. It is called the Great North American Eclipse. It's on the screen. Next year, on April the 8th, 2024, your people across the United States of America, go ahead and run it, people across the United States of America are going to experience a darkening that will take place all the way from Mexico across the heartland of America and all the way into Canada. For more than four minutes, people are going to experience a blackout, a darkening of the sun. I want you to know that the physical things are only revealed by the spiritual. This hasn't happened in a very long time. As a matter of fact, it has been decades since there has been such a far-reaching eclipse effect across the entirety of the North American continent. What's the big deal? The physical, ladies and gentlemen, 
physical sign is a spiritual reality of where we're living today. That darkness is closing in. Now then Einstein comes along in his day and gives to us the wisdom of God that God gave him to reveal a truth known in Genesis chapter number one. To prove the existence of everything and anything, there must be the introduction of light. And so he comes up with his uh, equation of E equals MC square, the induction of light that is required to explain anything that exists. Mass, matter, this pulpit, your very body, all of that has to have the induction of light or it does not exist. Without him, Jesus Christ, nothing was made that was made. God is light, the Bible says, and in creation, the triune Godhead was there, the Father, the Son, the Word, the light, and the power of that light through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, was there in the beginning, and when God spoke, the Spirit of God moved and began restraining or pushing back the darkness at that very moment, and let there be light came into the world. That was before the sun, moon, and stars that was created on the fourth day. The Hebrews call it the Shekinah, the glory of God. I want you to know what Einstein was figuring out in his equations and all his mathematic uh, incredible mind that was being poured out to figure out what God said in the very beginning, that nothing exists without light. And since God is light, you and I have really no existence until we encounter the light of Jesus Christ. We are at this moment in the place where the restrainer, that is according to 2 Thessalonians chapter number two, which I believe to be the Holy Spirit working through the church, is in a place where he is about to stop restraining. How can you say that? Bible prophecy proves it over and over again. Here's some things you need to know that are happening right now. There is a population explosion that the Bible said would take place, Revelation 9, Revelation 16. The current population of this uh, planet, uh, Earth, is now exceeding 8 billion people. And there's whole groups and mindsets of people that are wanting to depopulate uh, so that we can make sure we have enough resources. I want you to know something, my friend. You don't have to worry about what God put in the ground a whole long time ago. The oil will never run out because even in the book of Revelation, he says, don't touch the oil. I can assure you that the climate minds and all those who are so concerned about running out of resources don't have to worry about a thing because the one who created all of the resources is still sitting on the throne this very day. And if he needs something, he speaks it into existence and it comes to pass. This population explosion is a part of Bible prophecy to reveal to us that we're living in the last day. Secondly, the increase of knowledge. Now, Daniel chapter number 12 verse 4 speaks to us about that. I just checked it out again this morning and according to some uh, of those that run these numbers and try to figure all this out, medical, listen to this, medical uh, knowledge is now doubling every 78 hours. Since COVID, we are now doubling the knowledge of medical science every 78 hours. It is said that we double our own knowledge in a six month period of time. Well, it's hard to be able to wrap your mind around that except to say that every invention that you and I know as modern inventions have been with, invented by the knowledge that God has given in the past 100 years. You do understand we've gone from the horse and buggy all the way to the space shuttle and beyond, ladies and gentlemen, just in a short period of time. Knowledge is increasing. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 12, that there would be an increase of violence that would take place in the last days. Daniel 12, 4 speaks to the increase of transportation, the speeding up of people going here and there. According to the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, there would be a rapid uh, disintegration of the society. 
As a boy, I would read that passage of scripture and think to myself, how in the world and when could this ever be? that there would be such a horrible disintegration of society. Uh, How could people not love their parents? How could people be so hateful to one another? And on and on it goes. I will tell you, we are living in that time right now. Not one of those things is not happening in mass today. And then Jesus speaks in Matthew 24 and 8 about birth pains. That is the increased frequency and intensity of what's taking place. That, I think uh, you and I discussed a little bit, the term convergence. It's more than just saying there's an earthquake over here and a tornado over here and this is happening over here. There is, and you see it happening constantly. As I speak today, there is a life-threatening hurricane that is going to skirt the coast of New New England. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, these things are not just happening because they're just happening. It is a convergence of things that is taking place, like Jesus said in Matthew 24, that would happen prior to his return to this earth. I want you to take a look at this chart, very simple chart that's up on the wall, to give you a timeline of what's going to happen and the next great event on the calendar of God. This, ladies and gentlemen, and what you need to know is that Jeff Kinley is a pre-tribulation rapture individual and so am I and this church believes in the pre-tribulation rapture that's the reason why we are here in the present age that we're in and we don't know the moment it's held in the mind of the father alone when that is going to take place when he speaks to his son and says go get my children go get my bride he knows the last soul that's going to be saved in the altar he knows the last sermon that's going to be preached for all of you that are more uh, concerned about your sporting SEC I want you to know he knows the last game that's going to be played he knows the last winner that's going to be selected he knows the last movie that's ever going to be made. And I can assure you that none of that, ladies and gentlemen, matters more than one soul that he knows is going to come. And then there will be a return of Jesus Christ. It's called the rapture of the church, the snatching away of the body of Christ off of this people planet. I want you to hear this statement and hear it clear. Five seconds after the rapture takes place, less than that, there will not be one believer left on this planet. Look around you this morning in this very full church and the thousands that are watching online. I want you to understand, if you enjoy the fellowship of other believers and you're walking with them, do not expect it after the rapture takes place. It will be a self-serving like you have never seen before, where people will not care about you or anyone else. And if you're sitting in this building or watching online right now and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, this message is going to reverberate in your mind over and over again. You'll remember on the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord 2023, I heard about Jesus coming back, but I never made a move. I want to say to you, if you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Jesus is coming. Now, for those of you that are not clapping your hands and looking at me like a cow looking at a new gate, I want to let you know, just because you've heard it all of your life doesn't mean that Jesus is delaying his coming. The Bible said in the book of Peter, there will be scoffers in the last days, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue like they are. I want you to know my father and my mother have fallen asleep and I've laid their body in the sod. But on that great getting up morning with the trumpet of God sound, there will be a rise of the occasion where the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. If you're not excited about it now, you You will be right after it takes place, but it'll be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Repent and come to Jesus before it's eternally too late. I want you to ask your neighbor right now on the left and right, are you ready for Jesus to return? I know you've heard it from this pulpit so much that sometimes it sounds like the teacher on peanuts. But that's the reason why I brought these prophecy experts in here because what I don't want you to do is let your ears wax gross as the Bible said that you've heard it so much that you think all things are continuing. I'm telling you God's getting ready to flip this thing upside down and only those who are ready are gonna meet him in the clouds. 
You know what I say in Pace, Florida, in Pensacola, in Milton? Let there be light. The chart that is on this wall describes to you from the time we are all the way until the new heaven and the new earth. The Bible says that the rapture will take place and the bride of Christ will be ushered into the very presence of God to meet the Lord at the marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ. Seven years of that period taking place. While on earth, there'll be hell on earth for seven years of tribulation. Only to return back on white horses according to the scripture in Revelation 19 to the very valley of Megiddo. I want you to know on my, on my phone as I have it right up here, my screensaver is a picture of Elijah up on that top of Mount Carmel and just over the edge is the Valley of Megiddo. Napoleon said it's the greatest battlefield that's ever been fought on or will be fought on. He knew what was going to take place and the Bible describes it. We will return those of us who are believers back to this earth at the Battle of Armageddon and Jesus Christ will come in front of us and and the Bible said he will destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. I want you to know Jesus is never going to turn the light off. His light is always on and let me tell you, anybody that's around him is reflecting his light always on. You're not a Christian just on Sunday. You better make sure the light is on and let there be light on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday. The Bible says that once that takes place, we'll be ushered into a thousand year millennial reign where the lamb will lay down with the lion, where Jesus will have walked across the Kidron Valley, been there, seen it, bust through that eastern gate that's been walled up because the Muslims heard the rumor that there's some Messiah coming that's a Jew and we can't let him into the old city of Jerusalem to sit on the throne of his father David, but it will not stop him. He will walk through the, through the Kidron, he'll walk through the gate that has been blocked up with bricks and mortar and assemble him place his place on the throne of his father David and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about just any God. I'm talking about the God of gods, the Lord of lords, and the King of kings. A thousand year of millennial reign will take place and then, then, I want you to know we sung it for years out of our church hymn book. Uh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that's gonna be. And we sing that like everybody's going to stay. We're all going, but not everybody's going to stay. Those that have rejected Jesus Christ, the wicked, dead, and living will rise to meet God Almighty at the great white throne judgment. To hear the words, if you've rejected him, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. What a horror, that is the most horrible words that any human could ever hear is that God says to you, I never knew you. When he cleans this earth off, you're not gonna have to worry about climate change. I can assure you Al Gore won't have to worry about a cleanup program. There'll be no ducks that have to be washed off with Dawn soap. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. God's gonna set it on fire. He's gonna burn this earth until every impurity. I want you to know, as I speak right here, just outside the door, many of you don't know, just outside the door on the other side, years ago, a dry cleaning agent, a dry cleaning service was next door and they went out back of that place and poured that dry cleaning solvent all on the ground. It has seeped into the water table and made its way across the parking lot of Pace Assembly all the way down to the sign and down towards the Circle K. Problem, Circle K had a fuel dump that got inside the groundwater and started working its way back this way. The property of Pace Assembly has been tested and we can do what we need to do, but the groundwater is being reclamated out on the other side over there because they found this agent inside. When God comes back to this earth, he's gonna burn it so bad and burn it so good until all the agents that are contaminating his water and his property are going to be sucked up in the fire of God. I know you might not believe what I'm saying, but you ought to blog somebody on their climate change mindset and tell them, just wait around until God burns it all up and gets it all back to the beginning again. 
The dark one, Satan, has tried to put the light out from the beginning. In the garden, he tried to put the light out by speaking into the ears of Eve and Adam. And so God had to remove Adam and Eve out of the garden, but the light kept right on burning. He tried to put the light out in society when the violence was taking place and the minds of every person was only evil continually. But the Bible said he found a man in his family who had light in him and Noah found favor in the eyes of God. He preserved him by putting him inside of the ark with his family. And for those days floating on the tide until once he opened up and there was the sun shining again. I just want to stop and do a little pastoral care right here. If you're in a dark place right now, if you've been walking through a dark place, whatever you do, don't look out this way. Look up this way and you'll see the light of God shining all of the time. He tried to put the light out when Jesus was hanging on the cross. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, and I can see the hand of God reach into the abyss as Jesus hangs on the cross, drops his head between his shoulders and said, it is finished. The Bible said for three hours, here's the darkness that covers the sky. Darkness cloaked because the light had been put out. They took the light off of that cross and put him inside of a tomb in a dark place. The worst thing you could do is to take a seed, bury the seed, plant the seed, because whether you like it or not, the seed will come back again. On the th- what was it? World was hopeless without the light. They went back. Peter said, "I go a fishing. I, I, I'm done with this thing." Two guys on the road of Emmaus are walking all the way down the street to a place that is lonely and despaired. And Jesus walks up beside him and said, "What y'all talking about, boys?" He said, "What do you mean? What are we talking about? We're talking about the one who we had hope in, and we thought he was going to be the one." but they crucified him. We saw it with our own eyes. Saw him, put him into the tomb. I want you to know the world was hopeless at that moment. They had no thought that all of the evil that was going on in the world would ever be uh, changed and the darkness would always have its place except for that prophecy that Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said if you take this temple in three days if you try to destroy it in three days I will rebuild. I will come again. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus said he would come again after they crucified him, hold on to this truth. He is coming again in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. If you're ready right now, shout, I'm ready. Shout, let there be light. I want you to understand that in the current state of darkness that's closing in, Ephesians 6, verse number 12 becomes even that much more important. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. There's principalities, rulers, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ladies and gentlemen, we have not seen the level of spiritual wickedness in our lifetime like we are right now. Pastor Shane was telling me in the, in the um, uh, park inside of his town, witches have set up their place and they're now uh, praying and hexing. And when one individual was uh, interviewed about it, they said, well, the leader of our cult, the leader of our uh, Wiccan, whatever they want to call it, sent me to this town, listen, as a missionary. Well, pastor, that's in the park. No, it's in the schools. No, it's in the grocery store. No, it's walking down the street. It's on the news. It's on the movies. It's everywhere. Darkness and gross darkness is coming in. And we better wake up that we're not just sitting watching the game. We are in a battle for the very souls of individuals that are sitting on our pews right now. How do you know that, pastor? I know it because of these things right here. These are the signs of darkness that are taking place. Signs of darkness in, our, in the nations where the Bible said wars and rumors of wars would be taking place. That there's a chilling effect that's taking place across our land because we're hearing 
that Russia continues to say we're going to send nuclear bombs and the Ukraine is being supplied by your tax dollars, 60 billion plus dollars that's been sent there to prop up what? We're in the middle of a mess that's going on and darkness continues to get darker in the nations. So there's signs in nature, ladies and gentlemen, more signs than I've ever seen as the stars and the moons and the planets, they just reached out. Uh, yesterday he was showing a picture of how deep the galaxies are and now uh, telescopes can see in the deep darkness and find the stars that have their own galaxies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an unprecedented time that we're living in. We're looking at all kinds of darkness that's encroaching by trying to convert climate change into a religion and they've successfully done that. Where people are, listen, and I'm probably gonna get on some thin ice right here, but you know me. I just wanna let you know, your animals do not have a soul. And when we have elevated animals above human babies in the womb, we are a dark society. Now I appreciate your dogs and your dogs. I'm not much of a cat guy, but give me a dog. I appreciate your dogs and your cows and your goats and all that kind of stuff, but they do not have a soul. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Or maybe you don't want to hear what I'm saying. Pastor, are there going to be dogs in heaven? Well, the Bible says that there's going to be animals. I mean, why did he allow Noah to name all of the animals if God ain't concerned about animals? It don't take very much thunking to do that. Come on, somebody. But the tactic of the enemy is to elevate creation above the creator. Creation above those that are created fearfully and wonderfully made in the very image and likeness of God. How about the signs that are in the economy? Hey, have you heard the news from Washington? Everything is great. Isn't it great? Come on, somebody. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it just fantastic? I mean, people are prospering like never been. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, it took $125 to fill up your vehicle. Oh, I'm sorry, you went to Panera Bread and you paid 100 bucks for four salads. Come on, somebody. You went to Chick-fil-A and you thought you were ordering at a gourmet restaurant. What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. People are ignoring the darkness turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to it all and dropping their credit card on it to the degree that the debt is going higher and higher every day. Here's my admonition for you in the economy. Get out of debt, pay your tithes, and watch God bless your life. And if you've got to live, come on somebody. Don't you worry about the Lord. He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Arm and hammer may not have a hot dog to munch on, but the righteous will have everything they have need of. Don't make me preach in here. How about the signs in spiritual things that are taking place? Spiritual signs where the Pope is embracing everything coming down the pike, including LGBT. What's wrong with what's going on? Look at this. You would think that the movie studios would want to be able to have $150 million as an opening day on The Sound of Freedom, but oh no. What does that movie do? It pulls the cloak off of the darkness and shares the light on human trafficking. The devil is a liar. You're fighting forces, ladies and gentlemen, that are not flesh and blood, rulers of darkness and principalities. But I came to tell you that greater is he that is in you than he that's in that world. How about the signs of darkness in our society? Society's gone crazy, hasn't it? 
where we are now ordaining homosexuals and lesbians and drag queens are attending school functions. The other day, a drag queen takes out a paddle and paddles the behind of a principal in the school. Are you kidding me? Now, the biggest problem you and I will have, especially all of the alpha males out here, is restraining your own self. <laughs> Y'all not talking to me. See, I'm sorry, it hadn't happened to your child yet, but, 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 but let your kid bring that book home from school that says uh, gender changing is okay and my teacher said it's okay. There are whole states and school systems that are saying the parents do not have control over your children. If they come to the school as a boy, we'll send them home as a girl and in indoctrination. The devil is a liar. You better come out of that kind of thinking and realize that God Almighty gave the gender male and female and society's gone crazy. Let's there be light. How about the signs of the time, the sign, the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is the sign of all signs. And ladies and gentlemen, they were watching the darkness close in around them every day. It's amazing to me that at the same time that the persecution has come upon a previous president, Mr. Netanyahu as receiving that same kind of pressure in the court system. You want to know what America's, those in leadership have a thought of today? They're going to invite the president of the Ukraine to the White House, but Mr. Netanyahu will not come to the White House this coming week. He'll meet him in New York. If you curse them, God said, I will curse you. If you bless them, I will bless you. I want you to know to make sure all of you here and all of you that are watching understand the foundational principle as it relates to the nation of Israel and the Jewish people at Pace Assembly. We will bless them continually as we always have and stand in the guard for the nation of Israel always. Make no mistake about it. I've been to Israel. For all of you that want to share the argument that the Palestinians are oppressed people and on and on and on, you should take a trip with me to Israel and find out how good and how well they are taken care of by the nation of Israel living on their own property. It is so magnificent as one particular guide showed us. And all you, they want you to see is some great big cement wall that's keeping them out. Well, let me just tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If people were coming across the border bombing my house, with my kids inside of the bus, I'd put a wall up and guards up there too. But that actually is only a short portion of the entirety of that security fence all the way around Israel. Most of it is not a, a cement wall. You need to understand that they took such great care and meticulous walking that the man who was in charge of all of it, heard it with my own ears, literally walked it out step by step. And if he got to a house where there may have been someone who was not wanting that thing to go through there, they would make a way to go around that right there. You can see for yourself and they would make a path to go all the way. I want you to know something. Whenever there's trouble, in fact, let me throw this on you. When I walk through uh, the hospital there at the Rambam Hospital uh, in Jerusalem, outside of Jerusalem, it is a trauma center that is set up like none other. And when one of the leaders of Hamas, I believe it was, their daughter had cancer, Israel sent its own ambulance in in the dark of night through the tunnels, brought the girl to the hospital performed the surgery, got her all healthy, and then took her back through the tunnel and gave her to her Hamas daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same people that's bombing the nation of Israel. And with great restraint, they've got it. But one day very soon, ladies and gentlemen, God is gonna say, I've had enough with you trifling with my nation. And he's gonna step out with the power of a thousand megatons. And he's gonna blast it all clean because he knows and 
they know that, they, that Israel is the eye and the very apple of the eye of God. Rest assured, you can rest assured the Arab nations and others are gonna find themselves in a mess in the days that are ahead. But Israel, little nine miles wide Israel is still gonna be standing. Let there be light in the nation of Israel. Here's a few things I want to get to you before we walk out of this place today. Because whenever light comes, it dispels the darkness. Here's your instruction. In him, there is no darkness at all. Pastor, I have a little bit of darkness. No, you got to get the darkness out if you're going to be like Christ. So here's three things for you right now. You write them down, keep them in your mind, go back and look at them. First of all, God is shouting from heaven with all these prophetic events that are happening. It's time... Romans said it's high time. Well, I'm just gonna tell y'all. As I was growing up, whenever my father said, it's high time for you, it's one of two things that was gonna happen. Either I was gonna get up and start doing what he said and what he wanted me to do, or it was high time that I was gonna get my britches jacked up to the high heavens. High time, come on somebody. And I don't mean time. I'm talking about high time in the mind of God. I needed that for some of you who don't understand what I say. First of all, the thing you've got to do is see the light. Look at somebody and tell them I got to see the light. That's what I'm doing here today. John chapter 9 verse 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me, Jesus said, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, the Bible said, watch this, he spat on the ground, made some clay of the spittle, anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, and said unto him, go wash at the pool of Siloam. Incidentally, they just uncovered the eight steps that lead up to the pool of Siloam just to confirm to you that the word of God is continuing to be revealed even as we are watching day by day. He said, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Ladies and gentlemen, when you turn the light on, there's vision. What's happening in our world? Too many people. 1% of churches is turning the light on in Bible prophecy. That means that 99% of the others are walking in darkness and gross darkness. I'll tell you what keeps you motivated to be able to serve the Lord. The fact that he could come back at any moment. Vision, light, is seeing, it's insight, it's foresight. But what's happening in our churches today, like Eli, the high priest, who let his sons be perverted at the very door of the temple. Pastor, that's not happening today. Oh, yes, it is. When whole denominations are changing their biblical ground, and listen, Charles and John Wesley would flip in their grave to know what's happening with their Methodist denomination today. But oh, let's not leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening in every denomination. So you know what you better do? You better turn the light on and relight the lamp inside of your own life. Because the Bible said that Eli let the lamp go out in the temple of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when the lights go out, I can assure you, you better have and better be the light to lead someone out of that darkness. Eli, the Bible said, let the light go out and he lost his vision to see what was going on. He ignored the sin in his own house. But when Jesus spat on the ground, mixed some clay together, put it in the eyes. That's, that's dumb, putting dirt in your eyes. I mean, how are, you going, how are you going to get me to see by putting dirt in my eyes? I'm glad you asked. This is a scientific mission, a message for you this morning. Jesus spat on the ground, did he not? Come on, that's not a trick question. Did Jesus spit on the ground? He spit in the clay. He mixed it up, made a little paste. He took that same spittle in clay. Clay is dirt. It's what man's made of. God spit in the dirt. <laughs> the light spit in the dirt. 
They can tell a lot about you today by you spitting in a test tube. Jesus already knew that. So he spit in the dirt, made a little little pace and said, my DNA, if there's healing in me, there's gonna be healing in your eyes. He took the clay and smashed it in his eye and said, go wash at the pool of Siloam. And the Bible said when he washed, he came by seeing and his vision was clear. Oh God, let us see the clarity of the light of God. Do what you've got to do. Open my eyes to see. Let there be light. It's time to believe the light, number two. Somebody say, believe the light. They doubted that Jesus was who he says he was. When they heard the Son of Man saying he would be lifted up, they looked at him and said, are you talking about you? Here's what Jesus said in John 12. Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Verse 36, while ye have light, believe in the light that he may Uh, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did, watch this, we learned this yesterday, he did hide himself. If you were here yesterday, you heard Bill Federer talking about, I think it was, hiding himself in the galaxies beyond. Because if the full glory of God came upon us, we could not stand it. The Bible says, verse 37, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Him. This is a time sensitive call for you to believe while you have the light. Third thing, it's time to walk in the light. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, but if you walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. You know what that's saying right there? You cannot get along with your neighbor like you should unless Christ is dwelling on the inside of you and them. How many of you remember several years ago when I brought in here a great big 13-foot cross? And you remember the man who had built that was sitting right over here. Some of you don't. You need to go online. It's on there. That man was a KKK executioner. He was the head of the execution party of the KKK. He had been sent years ago in the 70s to kill Pastor Lowry. Brother Zepp was in the car. They were going to push him over the side of the cliffs and the bluffs on Scenic Highway. But the Holy Ghost led them a different way to come back. Now, all these years later, this man lives in Defuniac Springs. He's building crosses now because one day after that incident, he brought his robe and all of his KKK material and laid it down on the altar in that chapel and received Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Now he says, I don't burn crosses, I build crosses. Around this church, I've got several of his cedar-made crosses. He brought me a 13-foot cross into this place, stood it up right here. And if you were in that service, I had a white man. This was in the middle of CRT and BLM and everything else going on. I had a white man who walked up here, former KKK, and Brother Legero walked up on the other side, and you know where they met? Right there at the cross. Next thing you know, they're embracing one another. We didn't stage that. You know why? Because when the light's in me and the light's in you, we got to get together because it's the same Jesus. He's not a black Jesus, a white Jesus, an Asian Jesus. He's Jesus in you and Jesus in me. And if you've got Jesus and I got Jesus, we've got to love one another. That's the way the Lord said it's going to be. Oh, I wish somebody would give him glory in here. We emit what we absorb. We're born again to absorb and reflect the light of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, the light of God. We are not mirrors, simply reflecting something. We absorb the light. He lives on the inside of me. Are you hearing me? Too many believers are living in the shade. They are experiencing a spiritual eclipse. Here's a question. When was the last person you won to the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, 
I haven't lost my place. I'm just letting you ponder that. Because why are you still here? Why weren't you buried during COVID? Why are you still breathing? Why are you still alive? Well, I got my job. I got my business. I got this. I got, I, you know, I got to go to the game. I got, a, I got a vacation coming up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let there be light. Well, pastor, I'm on vacation. I don't, I don't you know. You're going to take a vacation from God? Uh, let me ask you a question. I can get no amens in here, but I ain't looking for none. Let me ask you a question. How would you like it if God took a vacation from you? I'm going to be gone for seven days. I'll see you when I get back. Let me tell you what happens when God, the restrainer, is removed. All you have left is darkness. Did you hear what I said? Second Thessalonians 2, I'm hurrying here. So those of you in the back that's got my PowerPoints, I'm free flying now. Second Thessalonians 2, the Bible says that when the restrainer, he who now lets, when he moves out of the way, I believe that to be the Holy Ghost functioning through the church. When the church disappears off of this earth, the Holy Ghost is going to go into the Holy Spirit. His operation, his way of moving is going to change. In the Old Testament, he came upon Samson. He came upon David. He did not live on the inside of, we have the privilege of having the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised the three-day dead body of Jesus Christ dwelling inside of every believer. The light is in you. But things are going to change when the rapture takes place. The restrainer who is now holding back the darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, when the church leaves, the restrainer is going to back off and darkness is going to cover this earth like we have never seen. The church disappears and the light goes away. Work while it's day, he says. Walk in the light, he says. What do you want me to do, pastor? I want you to let there be light wherever you go. Are you turning the light on in somebody's life? Because we already know government does not have the answer. Worldly solutions won't work. The darkness won't retreat at more education. The darkness won't retreat with more financial programs. Come on, somebody. We've just about paid everybody into laziness right now. And what's happening? It's having an effect in the church where people don't want to come to church or they feel like somehow that this whole thing about uh, God's word and Bible prophecy and the Lord coming back, ah, don't worry about it. Go and have a ball. I want you to know something, my dear friend. Don't get caught up in the mindset and the systems of this world. It's darkness that's encroaching. And listen to me, being deceived, you don't know that you're deceived when you're deceived. The sheep doesn't run away, he nibbles away. So worldly solutions will not stop the darkness and darkness will not retreat at political power. The darkness won't retreat because of scientific advancements. It's only the overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony that's gonna be able to turn the light on the age that we're in right now. So where is Jesus in relation to the church and believers? Well, Revelation 1 tells us in Revelation 2. What's he doing right now? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's walking among his churches. He's finding out ones that are putting the lights out and those that are turning on the light. And there are whole groups of people that claim church. They're going to go to church today. They're going to check off their religious box. But their light is not burning. Now, what's he doing when he's walking around? I, I, this is a whole other preaching and teaching. Get his book. You'll find out the whole deal. What is he doing? He's inspecting it. He's wanting to see what influence is the light. Because if the light is too dim... You're having zero influence and effect in your society. 
Come on, church. What is Jesus doing? He's performing the task of the priest in Revelation 1. The very first task of the morning was to come and trim the wicks from everything that had been causing it to dim and lose its light. He was trimming the wicks. He's checking it out. Is the light burning? That's what he's doing right now. He's walking through this place and where you are right now, and he's inspecting whether or not you are at full brightness. There's nothing I hate worse than a dark room. Have I got a witness in here? A few of you. Now, if I'm sleeping, turn the light off. But I've learned to sleep with the lights on. For those of you that are too young to be able to do this, when you get a little older, here's one of the enjoyable things about being old. You can shut your eyes and your ears will go off at the same time and you can sleep on a Sunday afternoon like a... Oh, there ain't nothing better. I climb on that plane going to Israel. I got them little things to put over my eyes, put my little ear pods in, and I don't hear nobody saying nothing. God is speaking to us and saying, <laughs> it's amazing. I just changed some bulbs in our house the other day. For 12 years, these incandescents have been up there, and guess what? They're now LED. They forced me to buy LED. And they said on the box, it's a lifetime warranty. Who keeps the receipt for those lifetime warranties? I don't. Because they said it's going to last a lifetime. I've got incandescent bulbs that are still burning in my house from the day I put them in there 13 years ago. But I put some LEDs in the other day and they lied to me. Next thing I know, I think I'm losing my mind, but the LED's going. Jesus, you got some spit? Come on now. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. I got to change this bulb. I got to change this bulb. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday. You're in this building. You're watching online. It's time to change the bulb. <laughs> Some of you got saved in 19 whatever that it was, but I came to tell you, you need to hone up on it and change the bow. Jesus is walking among us this morning, checking out the influence. He's checking it out. He said, I'll need you to be light and I need you to be salt and I need you to be the kind of ingredients that are gonna make a difference. And this is what, this is what really caught me and I'm almost done. I, I've read, I've preached from this before in Matthew 25 of the 10 virgins waiting on the bridegroom to come. And the Bible said all 10 of them had lamps that were burning at one time. But because they were waiting and had to wait and some of them said, when's he gonna get here? And some of them said, I can't wait any longer they started neglecting the light. The only thing that could show, the only thing that could show them the path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Little by little, their lamps went out, the Bible said. And there they are. They lost the oil. The light would burn if you had the oil. The oil is the Holy Ghost. You've let the Spirit of God dissipate from you and not replenished it enough to keep the light burning. Suddenly the things of God are not as important as the things you've got planned. That's what was going on. But here's what really caught me, and I, I've read this, I've studied it, I've preached 
And maybe, maybe you had it a long time ago and, and, and I just missed it, but, but here's what I found out. The Bible says that five of them were wise because they still had oil and extra oil and their lights were still burning. But five of them were foolish because they ran out of oil and begged the other ones to give them some oil so that they would have enough. And they said, not so, go on to the store, go to Sam's and get you some. Lest we don't have enough. Now that's important. Let me stop right here and preach that for 30 seconds. That's so important because you cannot ride on my coattails or anybody else to get to heaven. You got to have your own oil. But here's what really got me. It's not a matter of them just not having light and them having light. It's the fact that as a last day sign, 50% of the light went out. I said, oh my Lord. Half of who should have been brightly burned. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about people who came to church week after week and yet neglected so great a salvation. Half went dark. Half went out. My friends, it's time for us to let there be light again inside of our hearts because the only way to combat the absence of light is with the presence of light. I need his presence because the only reason why, darkness, according to scientists and physicists, darkness and light run at the same parallel. So it's not a matter of the darkness not being there because it's always going to try to be present. But the only reason why it's not encroaching is because there's light that's running. Enough to keep the darkness back. The loss of illumination allows darkness to grow. Jesus said in Revelation 19, at my second coming, that he will destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. Let me tell you how bright the light's gonna get, Revelation 22. The Bible says that when we finally arrive in that new heaven and new earth, there'll be no need of exterior lights. For Jesus Christ himself will be the light. How many lights are burning bright in here? Let me see your hand. I close with this. The Holy Ghost was dealing with these men yesterday and they trampled all around this. And I was thankful that they didn't get on it because this is the hook of my message for you today. Einstein's theory of relativity, put it up there. Einstein's theory of relativity that he studied, of course, says that the induction of light is what is required for all things to exist, matter, whether, whether it's the chair, the bottle of water, the Bible you have, this microphone, so forth and so on. But Einstein dealt with some other equations and the scientists did and they're running, they run equations now and experiments where they've taken the protons and reduced them down to what they call pions. And they said, we're going to try to speed that up to the speed of light because Einstein said at the speed of light, at the speed of light, that matter, whatever that matter is, the chair, the person, whoever it may be, decays in less than 28 billionths of a second. 28 billionths of a second. Some, some smart guy calculated it out to be 1,920 feet, approximately a quarter of a mile. And so they ran the experiments. And they've only been able to get up to 99.99999% because nothing can exceed the speed of light. Nothing can exceed the speed of light. It dissipates. It is no more. It has to change. Are you with me? What happens if you take an object with mass, a person, a chair, whatever, and move it faster and faster? 
Well, Einstein's thought was that when it gets to the speed of light, the clocks stop, time stops. What are you saying? When time reaches the speed of light, that's called eternity. No time. Clocks stop. In fact, he said, if you were to push through that, it would literally slow the clock down until it stops. And I sat the other night for your sakes and listened on YouTube to six different physicists tell me about this whole experiment. And when the scientists took the smallest subatomic pion and made it travel up to the speed of light but couldn't get it any further, they concluded not by that experiment but by the experiments that they ran around it that at the speed of light, clock stops, time stops, the atom is moving, but it moves into eternity where there is no time. And if you were here yesterday, you heard Bill Federer say, a day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. We're still moving, but it feels like I'm not, but we go into a slow, t slow effect, a slow moving effect, but we're just moving in a different form. So at the speed of light, mass breaks down and your body cannot survive the speed of light at 186,000 miles per second. Mass cannot pass through the speed of light. At the speed of light, things change. So I say to you again, when time reaches the speed of light, that is eternity. Let me say it a different way. Einstein had no idea that he was speaking something. The scientists who are conducting the experiments don't understand it. They're just doing experiments. But when time, as we know it right now, and some, I just read an article last night where somebody said, have you figured it out that time is moving faster, it feels like? I mean, I hope you all know that 13 weeks from now, I think it is, is Christmas. <laughs> have you bought your gifts yet? Have you opened up an account on Amazon? What are you doing? You better hurry up and get it before somebody else does because it'll be here before you know it. They already have Halloween stuff out. Time. So when time reaches the speed of light, you go into slow motion, it feels. But I'm moving faster than ever before. In fact, light speed. Here's what I want to say. When time reaches the speed of light, that means you've stepped into eternity. Let me say it another way. When time reaches the speed of light, things change. Let me say it another way. When time reaches the speed of light, it is the Einstein explanation of the rapture of the church. Consider this, ladies and gentlemen. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, this mass, shall put on incorruption, no mass, and this mortal shall put on immortality, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Ladies and gentlemen, when time reaches the speed of light, we're going to be gone, and it could be any second now. Get on your feet and shout, let there be light. 